Hello and welcome to Inside the Summit League. Just three weeks left now in the regular season in basketball. The league tournament will get started March 8th in Sioux Falls. Got great races going on both sides. The IUPUI women tied at the top now after knocking off South Dakota State. We will hear from IUPUI head coach Austin Parkinson coming up. The men's race is tight to North Dakota State with a one-game lead now on Fort Wayne and South Dakota State. The Bison, by the way, are up to number five this week in the College Insider Mid-Major poll. North Dakota State is up in the top 50 in the RPI, and they got to be leading the league in dunks after this weekend. A couple of games on Thursday. Here is NDSU at home against IUPUI and South Dakota State at home against Fort Wayne. South Coast State is on a pretty good roll right now. Looking to make it three wins in a row, wearing the camo uniforms on military appreciation night. Louis Jacobo had eight points in the first eight minutes of this game for Fort Wayne, but he only ended up with ten in the ball game. And SDSU just took off midway through the first half. Chad White made five threes. SDSU was ten of 19 as a team. And the Jacks up by nine in the first half. Look at this pass. The Jay Biddle to Cody Larson and SDSU up by 13 at halftime. Big Steve Forbes did some damage early in the second half for Fort Wayne. Got a layup here, had a dunk after that. He had 10 points, but SDSU held the Dons to just 35% shooting. Uh, Jordan Dykstra had 18, Larson had 17, and the Jacks win at 79 to 51. So North Dakota State could move into a tie at the top of the standings if the Bison could beat IUPUI. Jordan Aubert came off the bench, made his first five shots, and NDSU led by six at halftime. And then they started playing above the rim. Taylor Braun, and then Braun again off of his steal. NDSU had eight dunks just in the second half. Corey Brown had a couple of those on the baseline. And another Braun to Brown throwdown coming up after this. Brown had a great weekend for North Dakota State in their two wins. And then the one and only... Trayvon Wright coming up on an alley-oop. IEPUI got five threes in this game from Gerard McCallum, 16 from Mitch Patton, but it was close. Bison went at 66-60, though. Saturday's games, when we come back, including Cam Griffin and Denver jamming on the Coyotes and the league leaders going head-to-head in Fargo. This isn't an epic sports commercial. There's no Hollywood director. There's no million dollar budget. There's no slow motion. Or stadiums filled with crowds. It's just us. Us. We're real athletes. Real athletes. Who want to get better, get stronger, and make the starting lineup. Be healthy and active. And this is where we'll do it. This Sanford Sports Complex, a game-changing destination. Learn more at SanfordSports.com. Minutes east of Sioux Falls stands Grand Falls Casino Resort. A casino in a grand new way where you can turn an evening into a winning night out. It's the Grand Falls Casino Resort Half Million Dollar Giveaway. Yeah, a half million. Between now and March 30th, play your favorite games to earn entries. Entries are good for all 13 drawings. Then be here for the Sunday afternoon drawings for your chance at a half a million bucks. Grand Falls Casino Resort, a grand new way to eat, play, and stay. Inside the Summit League is brought to you by Sanford Health, Grand Falls Casino, and Dakota Land Honda. Back to men's basketball, and we had a shuffle in the standings after Saturday's games. Uh, Denver and Omaha both moving up. South Dakota State continues to climb as well. And North Dakota State takes over the top spot now after knocking off Fort Wayne. The Dons and the Bison, both 6-2 and two in the league. Coming into this one, Fort Wayne had already beaten NDSU earlier this year in Fort Wayne, but the Bison led from start to finish. Trayvon Wright led North Coast State with 15 points and 6 rebounds. Steve Forbes, his usual beastly self, he led Fort Wayne with 17, but 
Taylor Brown was doing this, and when he wasn't doing that, he was doing this. Fort Wayne played quite a bit of zone in this game. Tough three by Braun there with the shot clock going down. He had 14 for North Dakota State. Louis Jacobo was hounded all night, mostly by Corey Brown. Uh, he does hit a three here off a of Joe Reed offensive rebound, and the Dons are down by six at halftime. NDSU held him off by a handful the rest of the game. More the high flying Bison, Corey Brown to Trayvon Wright. Brown had seven assists, another one there to Braun, and the Bison are up by 10. Fort Wayne kept coming back, though, had. The NDSU lead down to four with five minutes left. Work it all the way around here again to Forbes to get him close. But another Trayvon right. Highlight coming up here, and NDSU will win it by 11 over Fort Wayne to take over first place. This group has a poise about them. I would say that. And, uh, you know, a lot of people want to say about how we haven't after IUPUI, we win the game, and all I hear about is how poorly we played. Yeah, okay, great, that's fine. But we won, and you can rewrite history, but the year we made the NCAA tournament, we lost at home to Southern Utah. We beat a UMKC team in overtime. So it happens. Basketball season's long. Yeah, the Bison are just fine. Let's go to Denver, hosting South Dakota, and a career high in this one for Brett Olson for Denver. He had 30 he is the Summit League Player of the Week, by the way. The Coyotes had the lead in this game for 16 seconds. Led 8-7 to seven on a take there by Trey Norris. Other than that, Denver was in front the whole game. Denver put the clamps on USD leading scorer Brandon Boss. He was 1-9 of nine from the field, had two points, came in averaging better than a dozen. End of the half here off the scramble. Jalen Love ends up with it, and Jay Love, that might go in, yes. Pioneers up 38 to 26 at the half after the three by Love. And in the second half, Olsen, he made six threes in the game, was 9 of 14 from the field, 30 points, three assists, just one turnover in 38 minutes for Olsen. Denver does uh, this all the time. Cam Griffin screaming to the rim on the inbounds. He had 14, and Denver wins it 75-67. In Omaha, the Mavs have won three in a row to get to 4-4 four and four in the league now, taking on Western Illinois on Saturday. Garrett Covington uh, had 21 for Western Illinois. Omaha had 13 steals, though. Mike Rostampour finishing that one off. Justin Simmons back in the starting lineup. Great pass to John Carhoff. Carhoff had 19, and uh, so did Simmons. Jabari Sandifer had 14 for Western Illinois. Goes length of the court there, but Omaha up seven at the half. Western came back to tie the game at 47, but Omaha goes back up on a three by Simmons, and the Mavs hold on to win their third game in a row. And that is the second longest win streak now behind South Dakota State, the Jacks, and the Jags on Saturday in Brookings. P.J. Hubert hit two threes for IUPUI, but the Jags were just three of 13 in the game. Jake Biddle and Cody Larson, a little telepathy going right now. Two on the alley-oop for Larson. He had 13. Larson, uh, he was pounding the paint off the rims at Frost Arena for the weekend. Two more later in the half. Jack's up 15 at the halftime break. Khufu Najee had 19 to lead all scorers, but IUPY playing with the, uh, without Ian Childs right now. They played without Gerard McCallum in this game, and SDSU kept pouring it on. Jack's led by 31. And they will throw it down again and win by 24 over IUPUI. So, in the standings, SDSU in a tie with Fort Wayne at 6-3. and three. North Dakota State one game ahead. Uh, North Dakota State will play at Omaha on Saturday afternoon. We will have that game live on Fox College Sports at 4 o'clock. Women's Hoops next. IUPUI stays HOT. Since 1982, the Summit League has been achieving excellence. Beyond providing a quality education to more than 120,000 students, the league continues to strengthen its reputation of being nationally competitive in athletics. Today, more than 3,000 elite student athletes at eight institutions embody the vision, purpose, and innovation the Summit League represents. These young men and women are reaching for the summit in both athletic and academic endeavors.
Minutes east of Sioux Falls stands Grand Falls Casino Resort. A casino in a grand new way, where you can turn an evening into a winning night out. Spin a day off into a day of play. Who says life next door shouldn't be grand? Celebrate Valentine's Day with David Cassidy, February 14th at 8 p.m. Call, click, or visit for tickets. Grand Falls Casino Resort, a grand new way to eat, play, and stay. The great thing about snowboarding is the adventure. All day long, you're finding different ways of doing different things, and it's never the same. I don't mind snowboarding alone, but if you've got your friends up there on the mountain and you guys can all cruise down together, it's a really, really fun time. Snowboarding has been really fun and really rewarding for me, and I want it to be fun and rewarding for my customers as well. I'm Lindsay McKinstry, and I'm one of the snowboard experts at Shields. Inside the Summit League is brought to you by Sanford Health, Grand Falls Casino, and Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back now to women's basketball and three good games on Thursday at Western Illinois winning again at home. IUPUI picking up its seventh straight victory and South Dakota State on the road at Fort Wayne. South Dakota State at 7-0 in the league and the Jackrabbits jumped out early and rolled at the Gates Center in Fort Wayne. Kerry Young for two. The Jacks got 38 points. Just uh, one point shy of half of their points off the bench. Haley Seibert, good game again for Fort Wayne. Made four threes, got to the hoop too. She had 23. SDSU, though, got nine points and nine rebounds from Mariah Claren. And the Jackrabbits led by 22 at halftime. Second half, Amanda Hyde on the nasty cross over here. She had 13 points and seven rebounds, but... Hannah Strop had a career-high 16 for South Dakota State. So did China Stevens, and SDSU downs Fort Wayne 77-66. In Indianapolis, IUPUI stays right with SDSU. The Jags face in North Dakota State. Great night for Holly Johnson. Led the Bison with 20 points and five rebounds. NDSU led by 12 in the first five minutes, but the, Jack, uh, the Jags, that is, come back with Vieira Goss all the way in. She had 20. Kelsey Bird had five assists for IEPY. Great pass to Shanika Maddox. And when Nevada Markovitz uh, hits this three, the Jags are up by four, and they led by seven at halftime. Second half, Brooke Lamar had five assists for the Bison. Gets it again to Holly Johnson. And her 20 was good, but not enough. IUPUI had the handle on this one. Spectacular pass coming up right here by Katie Camello. Jags win 77-53 to go to 7-1 and in league play. And they would keep it going on Saturday in their showdown with South Dakota State. Meanwhile, Western Illinois, the only other team besides IUPUI to go undefeated on the weekend, only played one game, but they beat Omaha. Taji Kelly had 10 points for Omaha, hit that shot early. Omaha led the entire first half. They had 14 steals. Get it out to Erica House for three. She had 15 coming off the bench for Omaha. But Tori Neiman had the hot hand for Western Illinois. Made six of seven shots, 14 points for Neiman. She will do it again here. Western shot at a very respectable 45% for the ball game. Ashley Luke got her 17 points and 9 rebounds for Luke. She is still second in the league in scoring. First in rebounds at more than 10 per game. And Western grabbed the lead early in the second half. Never let it go. Michelle Maher scored their last 7 points and Western beats Omaha 71-65. to And on Friday night, travel partners Denver and South Dakota playing each other in Vermilion, Nicole Seacamp coming back from injury, back in the USD starting lineup, and she had 17 Coyotes up by five early. Allison Janicek is a senior from Omaha. She played well for Denver, 17 points, her second most of the season, and Denver down on the road uh, by three at halftime. South Dakota, though, came out and put up 55 points in the second half. Polly Harrington. Working inside from uh, one side and the other. She had 18 points and nine rebounds for the Coyotes. Denver had some issues from long range. They made just three of 13 threes. Morgan Van Riper Rose, great shooter, made one three. She made six the first time they played. And as cold as Denver was, USD was just as hot. The Coyotes shot 67% in the second half, 53% for the game, and they get a season split with Denver. Yotes win at 88 to 67. More women's hoops after this, including IUPUI taking down South Dakota State. We will talk with the Jags head coach, Austin Parkinson.
pass to Williams. Williams shoots. Gets up. He scores. Tie game. We are going they to bring the ball up court under the pressure. Long pass inside to Montgomery. He spins. The shot is up. And it's a 20 foot jumper from the 5'11 sophomore forward. Our heritage is rooted in the gymnasiums of every town, big and small, throughout the region. For this reason, Sanford Health proudly presents Heritage Court at the heart of the Pentagon. Minutes east of Sioux Falls stands Grand Falls Casino Resort. A casino in a grand new way where you can turn an evening into a winning night out. It's the Grand Falls Casino Resort Half Million Dollar Giveaway. Yeah, a half million. Between now and March 30th, play your favorite games to earn entries. Entries are good for all 13 drawings. Then, be here for the Sunday afternoon drawings for your chance at a half a million bucks. Grand Falls Casino Resort. A grand new way to eat, play, and stay. Inside the Summit League is brought to you by Sanford Health. Grand Falls Casino and Dakota Land Honda. Back to women's hoops, a close game on Saturday between North Dakota State and Fort Wayne and IUPUI knocking off the league leader, South Dakota State. Starting Fort Wayne with the Dons trying to salvage a weekend split at home. Fort Wayne came in averaging 75 points a game. This one ended up in the 50s. Amanda Hyde led him again with 19 points. NDSU freshman Bree Watman had her best league game so far. Throws that in, she had 11 for the Bison. Haley Seibert, meanwhile, for Fort Wayne. Step back three, no, gonna drive it instead. She had 17, and Fort Wayne up by four at halftime. Morena Whittle had 10 points, 10 rebounds, and two assists. Nice one there to Brooke Lamar. Game tied at 39, but Hyde, Sweet moves again, the cross and then the spin and end. NDSU actually had a two-point lead with about five and a half minutes to play, but Stephanie Mock made back-to-back -back threes. The Dons made their free throws, and they hang on and win this one 57-51. to And finally, the Clash of the Titans. SDSU at IUPUI, D.D. Bellamy had four steals. Mariah Claren had eight of the first nine points for SDSU. Nicole Rogers, though, matched her with a couple of threes early. South Dakota State led by five, but IUPUI used a 14-5 run to close the half ahead by four. Second half, Akilah Sims for two, IUPUI up by 10. Rogers hit five threes. Diara Goss had 27, and IUPUI wins it by 10. Both teams now eight and one in the league, and we take a look at the league standings on the women's side with the Jags and the Jacks tied up. Fort Wayne in third right now at five and four. And we are joined by the head coach of the new co-league leader, IEPUI, Austin Parkinson. And congratulations, coach, uh, on the win over South Dakota State. No surprise, I don't think, to anybody in the league, but how did you get it done this time against the Jackrabbits? Well, I, I think that we did a much better job of, uh, of boxing out in this game, and we were a little more aggressive ourselves on the glass. Um, and then I thought that, that uh, you know, we, we made some shots. Um, you know, we, we shot the ball better from, from outside than we did at their place, and, you know, that made a difference. But, you know, anytime you play South Dakota State, you got to get back on defense and box out, and we thought we did those things uh, maybe a little bit better than last time. And we should give your team all kinds of defensive credit. I don't think people realize that your team leads the league in uh, giving up the fewest points per game. Yeah, and, and the thing about that is we don't pack it in. I mean, it's not like we're playing a sagging man-to-man. -man. Uh, you know, we still try to get after people and, and pressure the basketball. And, um, you know, that's been the one, one common theme since I've taken over is our theme is defense lives here. And, you know, it's on our shirts, and, and the kids know that, and they've kind of embraced that mentality. And, um, you know, and, and we kind of go into each game uh, with, that, you know, with that mindset, and we hope it carries over on the floor. And on the other end, uh, talk about De'Ara Goss, the league leader, uh, league player of the week for the third week out of the last four. Uh, talk about her game, especially at the offensive end. Well, I'll say this. I mean, in my opinion, and I, uh, I would think most of the coaches would think this too, I, I think she's the best player in the league because she plays both ends of the floor. Um, if you look at, you know, the big games this year, um, you know, uh, South Dakota, South Dakota State, um, you know, she's, uh, she's shown up in a big way uh, and scored – uh, IPFW, she had over 20 plus, and so um, she does a tremendous job offensively. She's hard to guard off the dribble. Got a great mid-range game. But the other part about it is, um, she's usually guarding the best wing player every game, and uh, you know she she holds them below their average more times than you know often than not. And so 
um, you know, she she does a, a lot for for our program. And in addition to that, you your team can go about as deep as any team in the conference, can you? Yeah, uh, we, we we have our depth. We use our depth quite a bit, um, you know, and, and that was part of the uh, thought process of, um, you know, you got – we got a lot of girls that, that can play, and, and we feel like that, that you know we, we don't need to play them 30 minutes a game. That if they can play you know 20 to 25 good minutes, um, you know that, that they can play harder and, and hopefully uh, in shorter spurts. And um, you know it's it's been effective so far, and uh, really it can, it engages kind of everybody on the on the roster because they know there's an opportunity for for them to get in the game and play. All right, and finally, give us a quick scouting report on your game at Denver this Thursday. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. I'm a little concerned. I think this is going to be an extremely difficult trip uh, for us. I, I said that coming up that this stretch of South Dakota State, uh, Denver, South Dakota, and IPFW is going to be tough because Denver, um, their record is, is a little bit skewed because uh, they've played so many road games. But at home, uh, they put up a ton of points. And so um, our defense is going to have to be locked in. Um, and, and, and you know, and, and they, uh, they've got some talent. So uh, it's going to be a challenging game. And then obviously South Dakota, um, you know, I, I always have a ton of respect for what Amy does over there. Um, you know, C-Camp's getting healthy and they, they're starting to play, you know, some good basketball. So this is going to be a challenging weekend. All right, thank you, Coach. And we will take you to Indianapolis and the spotlight on IUPUI when we return. Minutes east of Sioux Falls stands Grand Falls Casino Resort. A casino in a grand new way, where you can turn an evening into a winning night out. Spin a day off into a day of play. Who says life next door shouldn't be grand? Celebrate Valentine's Day with David Cassidy, February 14th at 8 p.m. Call, click, or visit for tickets. Grand Falls Casino Resort, a grand new way to eat, play, and stay. Big sports commercial. There's no Hollywood director. There's no million dollar budget. There's no slow motion or stadiums filled with crowds. It's just us. Us. We're real athletes. Real athletes who want to get better, get stronger, and make the starting lineup. Be healthy and active. And this is where we'll do it. The Sanford Sports Complex, a game changing destination. Learn more at SanfordSports.com. Inside the Summit League is brought to you by Sanford Health, Grand Falls Casino, and Dakota Land Honda. By UPUI, it's Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis. And there are more than 30,000 students at this school. They are the largest enrollment uh, in the Summit League, and it's not necessarily just because they are in one of the largest cities in the Summit League. We take you to Indianapolis in this week's Campus Spotlight. Students here at IUPUI come here in part because of our international and national reputation for civic engagement and service learning. They also enjoy getting out and getting involved. This is part of this generation. The idea is that when students are engaged in practical learning experiences, it helps them to understand their course material in, in a deeper way. It's uh, meshing education with real life experience and with the community, you know, you have to basically give back and either way, you know, both hands work together, you know, and that's basically it's coming together as a team. I am convinced that it's, it's through experience, it's through interacting with others, it's seeing things for the first time, it's getting your hands dirty from one-time service experiences like on uh, Martin Luther King Day or our United Way Day of Caring where groups of students will go out. They may 
work at the animal shelter providing care for animals just for the afternoon, or they may be doing tree plantings, that kind of thing. Then they would go to more intensive involvement through our service-based scholarship programs, where students are engaged all year at a community organization. In almost all of our schools on campus, we have service learning classes from the freshman up through graduate programs. We have a range of students, starting with medical students, but we have law students and uh, dental students who are providing um, clinical services in the Neighborhood Fellowship Church, which is located on the near east side of the city. Um, Pastor Jim has always been wonderful and has always helped us understand what an impact we're making um, and to help us understand that we're always partners with the community, that we're not coming in to provide services, but rather we're learning from them um, and together we're making an impact on the community. One of the most exciting and long-term programs has been when our athletes read with children at school, IPS School 42. And what we find is that the student athletes come out of that experience of reading one-on-one -on -one with another kid and just being inspired to continue in their own education and inspired to make a difference. Students just love the projects. They really dig into it. Um, they really feel like they're making an impact on the community from what I've seen. And it really drives them to do more. Our name, I remind people, is not a partnership of two. It's a partnership of three. Indianapolis is a partner with us from the very beginning of the campus. And you cannot train people in the professions we teach here uh, without being partner with your community. Our thanks to John and Ed and everybody at IUPUI. Thanks to the reporters at all of our member schools. A reminder, our live game this week nationally is a men's game. We've got North Dakota State at Omaha. NDSU at 7-2, and two, Omaha at 4-4. Four and four. Bison trying to hang on to that top spot in the standings. And you can see it live on Fox College Sports, 4 o'clock on Saturday. See you next week.